have negative voltage but positive current so we're going to be in quadrant 2 so that's basically the the applicate or the, the main point of having anti-parallel diodes because here if we have non-unity power factor loads if we have a load that's um the voltage and current are not in phase then we have to consider the case that uh, voltage and current uh, might have different polarity so like they might be in um, either sorry quadrant 4 or quadrant 2 so like in these two quadrants then we have the diodes conducting the current okay so that's the whole uh, point I wanted to mention about the anti power diodes. Okay, the next thing I wanted to mention is um, one thing about inverters and like how we design it, how we how we make them is that you guys remember that when we talked about rectifiers we had one phase rectifiers and three phase rectifiers right both of them convert AC to DC okay and we have the same concept in inverters we can have a single phase inverter which what's which is what we are discussing right now or we can have three phase inverter so using a power electronic system using a combination of rectifier and inverter we can basically convert a single phase to three phase or a three phase to single phase okay the other thing that we can do is basically if if our AC has a different frequency we can change it to a a different frequency using the combination of rectifier and inverter so that's something to consider now let's go back to the full bridge or, or full or full wave inverter and we want to see a little bit more and eventually we want to see how we actually make uh, how we actually fire those switches Okay, so let's call this one S1, S2, S3, and S4. Okay, um, now one thing that we remembered is that S1 and S4 can never be on at the same time and S2 and S3 cannot be on at the same time, right? So we never can fire two switches on the same leg otherwise you would have short circuit now here i'm assuming a simple case of what we did before here i'm just like uh, drawing this logic table for s1 and s3 for upper upper level switches s1 and s3 right and s4 it's going to be complementary of S1 and S3 is going to be complementary of S2. Okay, so there's no point uh, drawing those. So 0, 0 means like S2 and S4 are going to be on, right? In this case, if S2 and S4 are on, what's the voltage? It's going to be 0, right? 0 and 1, it means that 
S4 is on, because S1 is off, S4 is on, right, and S3, right, so we have S3 and S4, okay, um, in, in that case, we would have negative BBC, okay, and, um, Then one zero we would have positive VDC and one one when both S1 and S3 are on we're gonna have again a short circuit across the load so it would be zero. And as mentioned this is a not gate. So here this is what we assume like Okay, um, so let's, um, now let's just like draw the actual um, uh, uh, output voltage and we're gonna see what's happening here. So Let me actually erase this one so that I have more room for this. Oh, sorry. Okay, so here we have positive VDC, negative VDC. This is where we have S1 on, S3 is off. This is off, on, on, off, off, on, okay. So here I'm using a technique that it only uses these two states, right? We only switch between these two states. So either between VDC or negative VDC or between negative VDC and VDC. So like it just like goes, uh, it, it basically goes from VDC to negative VDC or the other way around, okay? This is, if you're using this mod model for um, triggering our, or firing our switches, this is called bipolar modulation. Okay, means that the voltage level it basically changes from one positive voltage level to the negative of that and that goes from negative of that to the positive of that. Okay, so if that's the case, let's assume that we have uh, an RL load. Okay, so with like this this is voltage, and I want to draw current. Okay, I want to draw current. Let's assume that we have an RL load, and let's 